in singing our opening hymn, Sing a New Song. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Well, friends, I thank you for tuning in and joining in prayerfully to this celebration of the Mass for the fifth Sunday of Easter from the Cathedral of St. Peter and James in Peterborough. I'm very pleased to welcome today Father Joseph Devereaux, who is the pastor of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish in Hastings and the Chancellor of Spiritual Affairs for our diocese and he is the homilist for the Mass today. To prepare our hearts to celebrate worthily these sacred mysteries of our faith, let us acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, glory, glory to God, and on earth peace to people, people of goodwill. Glory, glory to God, glory to God in the Almighty, ever-living God, 
constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now, during those days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Therefore, brothers, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task, while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a convert of Antioch. They had these men stand before the apostles, who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread. The number of the disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Please join in singing a responsorial psalm. Lord, let your love be upon us as we place all our trust in you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to the Lord, a living stone, though rejected by human beings, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. 
Like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. For, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe? that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace of Christ be upon all of you. There are a number of things that arise from the readings from sacred scripture today. In the first reading, from the Acts of the Apostle, St. Luke, he describes the growing Christian community. He says that the disciples were increasing in number. 
The apostles had much work to do, and they could not do it all by themselves. They realized, the apostles, that their main task was to preach the word of God and not to wait on tables. Now, there's nothing wrong with waiting on tables. Actually, the laborers that I've known in my life, the ones who have been the, the hard workers and the laborers, they've also been the holiest. There's a saying reported that, I think it was Pope John the 23rd or Pius the 12th, that there was a man who was sweeping the sidewalks in Vatican City, the cobblestones. And so he bumped into the Pope and he asked, the Pope asked him a question. He said, who is holier? Me as Pope or you as a street sweeper? And the man said to him, if I do my job sweeping the cobblestone streets here in Vatican City with more love than you do your job, then I'm, God's more pleased with me. And so I tell you this just to let you know that there's all sorts of jobs and they're all useful. They're all necessary and they all work together. I'm a gardener. I like to garden. And so yesterday I put some topsoil on my garden beds and I dug them up and all the robins, it was amazing how many robins came out because they knew that I had turned the soil and that there was worms in there. My work helped them and the worms, they helped me. It's the same in our spiritual life. All things work together. We help each other. The apostles, they realized that they needed helpers as St. Luke puts it. Now, who were the helpers that they called? They called different people with different talents. There was to be a distribution of work according to these talents. And so the apostles, they called together a group of men and they laid their hands upon them and they made them deacons. Saint Stephen was amongst them, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit. And then it states that the word of God continued to spread. The number of the disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. So what's the message? We need holy priests, and they need holy helpers. Holiness is the goal, but it's achieved by getting up and getting going. For sure, salvation comes from God, but he uses human beings, men and women, to inform people about it. How can people hear the message unless it is preached to them? Jesus, he chose the 12, and the 12 chose others to assist them. And it's the same today. The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Pray, therefore, that the Lord of the harvest send labors into the harvest. On this fifth Sunday of Easter, it would be good for us to remember that the church is still called to grow. The message of Christ still has to go out to the whole world. In fact, we are living in a post-Christian era. Why? Because we don't remember who we are, where we came from, and where we are going. So who am I? Who are you? I am a human creature made in the image and likeness of God, and I have no lasting home here on earth. Jesus has prepared a place for me in the Father's house. And he tells us that. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? So we must ask some deep questions about who we are and what life is all about. If we look for answers in passing things, we will be disappointed. We will be crushed. I'm sure a lot of people are feeling a little depressed and anxious at the present time of the corona pandemic or epidemic. What does Jesus tell us? He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? We must always remember that Jesus is God. 
He is the Messiah. He is the one who was promised. God gave us a road map from the very beginning through the prophets, through the patriarchs and matriarchs, the apostles and the church. We are not wandering blind. We know the way. Jesus says of himself in the gospel, he says, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. There is no other way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer to all our questions. Jesus is the gate. He's not the exit. He's the gate that answers all our questions, fulfills all our needs, our desires. He's the word spoken by the Father. The word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. In Hebrew language, this word that we say dwelt amongst us, literally translated, it means he pitched his tent. The Hebrew word skenu, that Jesus literally came and he pitched his tent amongst us. He became one of us. The great I am, El Shaddai, Almighty God, Adonai, Lord Almighty, broke into human history himself. As advanced as our society is with its powerful inventions, its wonderful entertainment, lofty goals for the future, none of this will make us happy if God isn't at the center of it. If we do not seek the truth, which is God, and accept it, we will always be looking for something. Something will be missing. For people who say that life is not easy, tell them about the plan of God. When people aren't finding life easy, tell them about Jesus. God's ways are not our ways. Maybe this recent pandemic will help people reassess what is truly important. We are promised difficulties and trials in life. During his first missionary journey, the Apostle Paul, he spoke to those being converted, strengthening their souls, exhorting them to continue in faith. And he said to them, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. Jesus, he also declares in John's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 33, he says, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. God makes all things new if we turn to him and love him. We are either going to be growing or we're going to be shrinking. I ordered a book recently by a Jewish rabbi by the name of Daniel Lapen. It's called Buried Treasures. And in the 10th chapter of that book, he speaks about gener generational continuity. He says that the Hebrew word for generation, so in the sense of offspring from one generation to the next, the Hebrew word is door. But it doesn't mean a number of years, like 20 years for a generation or 25 years for a generation. It's a measure of continuity on which all else depends. It's a spiritual, not a biological measurement. So in a nutshell, the rabbi, he says, we need to learn from previous generations if we are going to progress, to make progress. There's not enough time in a person's life to figure everything out for ourselves. We can't discover everything anew. We climb upon the shoulders of those who have gone before us so that we can see farther. And if we don't learn from them, the result will be worse than lack of progress. We'll actually go backwards, we'll regress. You know, the Hebrew language is very interesting because it's a spiritual language. It's the language that God spoke to the patriarchs of old with. And there's many secrets in the spiritual language. They have deeper meaning, more than just a medium of communication between persons. It's also a language that communicates between God and man and woman. 
Sometimes for Hebrew words, if you spell them backwards or read them backwards, they give the opposite meaning. And that is the case with this word for generation, door. If you turn it around and read it backwards, it means decline, to regress. And so it is in the natural life and in the spiritual life if we are not worried about building the future upon the revelation of God that has been handed down through the prophets from one generation to the next, then there will be no future. At least not one that will be human and kind. The evil one is hard at work. And if he tested Jesus, he will test us too. So as St. Peter says, stay sober and alert. For your opponent, the devil, is prowling about looking for someone to, desire, to devour. Resist him steadfast in your faith. Believe me, there is a spiritual battle taking place. Know who you are, know where you came from. Recall the beautiful hymn, Faith of Our Fathers. Remember, they, they recorded this a decade or so ago in Ireland, and it sold out. It was a number one this compilation of old church songs, Faith of Our Fathers. And the lead song on that composition of hymns was one that is named Faith of Our Fathers, written by Reverend Father Friedrich Faber in 1849. And it's sung in both Catholic and Protestant churches. I think it captures the sentiment of what I've been trying to convey in my homily today. So I read to you just a few verses. Faith of our fathers living still, in spite of dungeon, fire, and sword. Oh, how our hearts beat high with joy, whene'er we hear that glorious word. Faith of our fathers, Mary's prayer, shall win our country back to thee. And true the truth that come from God, our land shall then indeed be free. Faith of our fathers, we will love, both friend and foe, in all our strife, and preach thee too as love knows how, by kindly words and virtuous life. We have to tell this message about God to people. Let's dust off our Bibles. Let's read them, the holy word of God. Let's seek God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our minds. This is what Jesus says. He says, I want to give you a spiritual heart. I want to give you the heart that's alive, a heart that I'm in. And what does he say through the prophet Jeremiah? He says, and when you seek me and find me, when you search for me with all your heart. Jesus is truly risen. We have to remember that God loves us, and to love God means we have to have joy and trust. Easter's not over. This is the fifth Sunday of Easter. Easter isn't over until Pentecost. And then, what's the promise at Pentecost? God's going to give us the fullness of his spirit. Open your heart. Open this heart so that it can become a heart that the spirit can come into. In fact, Easter's never over. We have Easter in our hearts all the time if we have God in our hearts. We either move backwards or forwards. We don't stay still. We're either declining or regressing or we're growing. And this is true of relationships, whether it's marriage or friendship. And so it is true with God. We need to work on our spiritual lives. We don't have all the answers. From my perspective, now spring is here. Summer's around the corner. Remember this, three, the three C's that you need in your life. The one, you need culture. You need good things. You need good music. And that's probably the older music, the good music, good art, good literature. So culture, good culture. You need cult, which is worship. All of these are the same root word. You need to worship. You need to have a spiritual life. And you need to cultivate. You need to get your fingers dirty. Grow a garden, plant some flowers. St. Benedict, he said that he learned more from nature than he learned from any book he ever read. 
apart from sacred scripture, the Bible, and the lives of the saints. So I'm learning from those robins in my garden. Let's not let these things pass us by. We know that there's something greater than ourselves, a good and loving God who is the answer. Our word for church, it comes from a Hebrew word as well, kahal. And what, what does that mean? Kahal means the assembly or the gathering of Yahweh. I know I speak for the bishop and for the priest of the diocese when I say I look forward to seeing all of you back in your churches and places of worship. When all this social distancing is over, that we'll be back together praising God and loving one another. And so may we all be blessed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With the Apostles' Creed, let us unite our voices and our hearts in the profession of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We turn to God, who is the Father of all, and place our trust in his providential love as we offer these, our prayers and petitions. For the church, a community of young and old called to firm faith and enduring love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of persecution among nations and among peoples, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us who are poor, lonely, and seeking God's consolation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all mothers today, in gratitude for their loving witness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us, God's people, called to manifest our discipleship by the love we have for one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering from or impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, that God may give them his strength and comfort. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and merciful God, listen to our prayers and help us to trust in you at all times. By your powerful grace, may we always know your will and seek to live it in our world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, Faith of Our Fathers.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands with the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter in chains, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the words and my soul shall be healed. Although you are unable to receive Holy Communion today, I invite you to join in the prayer for spiritual communion, uniting yourselves to our Lord Jesus Christ and to his church throughout the world. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our communion hymn, Taste and See.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father Devereaux and I join together in offering our best wishes for a happy Mother's Day to all the moms, grandmoms, and great-grandmothers out there. God bless you for all that you do, and here's hoping that your families will find a way to celebrate this day despite physical distancing. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please join in singing the hymn, Let Heaven Rejoice. <laughs> 